Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Shrewsbury International School, Bangkok. Thailand's most successful international school has two campuses, City Campus in Sukhumvit Rama 9 for children aged 3 to 11, and Riverside in Saton Rama 3 for children aged 3 to 18. Both campuses are now accepting applications for an August 2021 start and their early years program and other selected year groups for immediate start. Visit shrewsbury.ac.th slash podcast to find out more. On this episode, we go over 10 laws that anyone who plans to spend any amount of time in Thailand should probably know about. So, if you want your next vacation in the land of smiles to be trouble-free, you'll find some good info on this episode of the Bangkok Podcast. Sawadikrap, and welcome to the Bangkok Podcast. My name is Greg Jorgensen, a Canadian who came to Thailand in 2001 to work on an epic novel about two competing Siamese betta fish breeders who fall in love and conspire to corner the global supply of fish food. I haven't finished yet, so I'm still here. Wow, you're ambitious. <laughs> and I'm Ed Knuth, an American who came to Thailand on a one-year teaching contract 20 years ago, fell in love with wearing XXL shirts I've bought here in Thailand when I'm really just an L back home. So I never left. Oh, yeah? Try... try going into stores asking for 5XL, see how that works out for you. <laughs> Around 3XL, that's when you stop feeling good about it. Yeah, no kidding. Well, back, I mean, back home, I'm in L, or XL maybe. Right, right. But uh, here, significantly bigger. Well, I, here I get to be a big man. <clears throat> <laughs> we want to say a quick thank you to one of our patrons, Josh Likes to Eat, who supports us at the show Shoutout Level. Stick around after we're done talking about some of the laws that you should probably be familiar with if you spend any time in Thailand to hear why a Bangkok Museum visit made Dr. Trainee Josh decide to drop out of medical school. Mm. And a huge thanks to all of our patrons who support the show. Patrons got a whole bunch of cool stuff, including our ad-free regular show a day early, behind-the-scenes photos and videos of our interviews, discounts on swag, which you can find on our website, and various other things that aren't available to regular listeners. But best of all, patrons like Josh also get an unscripted, uncensored bonus episode every week where we riff on current events and random topics. We just finished recording this week's bonus show, and we chatted about Thailand's first reported locally transmitted coronavirus case in over 100 days. Boo! Yeah, which sucks. And what a difficult situation the government is in about the when and how of opening up again, and a potentially very big bit of news about who is and who is not standing up in Thai movie theaters. To become a patron, head to bangkokpodcast.com forward slash support. Interesting times in Thailand, Ed. Interesting times. No doubt. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, before we jump into it, we have to mention something that uh, regular listeners of the show probably noticed about three minutes ago, and that is that we are now going to be running short ads on some of our shows. Uh, I know some of you are groaning because, like, come on, let's be honest, who really looks forward to to advertising. But we want to grow the show, and ads are just a fact of life in most forms of media these days. So I'm not going to yak about it too much here, but I do want to share three rules that we will stick to when we do run ads on our show. Uh, number one, not every show will have ads, and if it does, the ads will be short, 30 seconds max, with a maximum of two ads per show. Uh, number two, we will only accept ads from businesses that we are familiar with and can recommend without hesitation or businesses that we use on our own above and beyond any podcast connection. And third and finally, patrons will get an ad-free version of the show. So uh, this might seem a little bit weird to you if you are a patron because you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> right. So uh, so there you go. It's a new thing and we're going to experiment with it to see how it goes, but we don't think it'll mess with uh, things too much. Ed and I spend a lot of time discussing it. And uh, we think it's a it's a good a good step. So if you want to learn more about this development, we have a special section on the about page of our website that goes into more details. Um, so if you have any feedback or you want to book your own ads, just drop us a line at bangkokpodcast at gmail dot com. For oh, sure. All right. Well, you might remember that we asked our listeners for ideas if they had any a while ago, because coming up with a show idea every week some sometimes be a little bit mentally taxing, especially for me. I don't know about you, Ed. You're smarter than I am. But um, 
We got some great ideas from our listeners sent in, and we're still going through them. But this week's show was suggested by our friend Pim, who actually, check this out, Ed, she used to be a student of mine. Uh, I used to be her teacher when she was in high school. That is scary. <laughs> that is frightening. I know, dude. I know. Uh, she's one of our patrons, and she is living La Vida Loca in New York. Wow. So she said her, her boyfriend is a lawyer, and as they plan to move back to Thailand eventually, they would like us to discuss some common Thai laws that people should know and be aware of if they are thinking of spending any time here. So we uh, dug deep and we did some sleuthing and asked some friends and came up with what we think are some pretty important, if not interesting rules that are probably good to know about if you spe- if you plan to spend any time here in Bangkok or living in Thailand and uh, keep them in the back of your mind because, you know, Thailand, you just never know. Yeah. So I think this is an interesting topic. A couple things I want to say up top. Um, we are not lawyers, um, and we are not responsible for any reliance you make on our advice. Okay, that sounds like something a lawyer would say. It it does. Uh, it does. <laughs> it does. In fact, I was a lawyer in another life. Um, no, seriously. Uh, I mean, I, I think we're not saying anything controversial. Pretty much everything we're going to tell you, you probably could find on the internet. Um, but just to be clear, um, if you're really curious, or if you're planning on doing anything important, and you need and you need to know what the Thai law is, you should look it up or talk to a proper Thai lawyer. Yes, that is good advice. Yeah. Good advice from an ex-lawyer about seeing a current lawyer. That's right. Um, and then the other kind of uh, before we jump in, thing we got to make clear. And Greg and I have harped on this many times. Um, we're going to talk about some laws that you probably really need to know because they are either regularly enforced or there's a good chance they might be enforced there are some other interesting laws here that it might be you know cool to know but if they're not enforced then it's not something you really have to know like just as an example there is a Thai law that says foreigners have to carry their passports with them at all times so it's kind of weird that they have this but i've never heard anyone being stopped or getting in trouble for not having their passport I mean, just to be clear, there are times where you should have your passport. I'm not saying you should never carry it with you, but um, obviously most people who stay here uh, do not carry their actual real passport with them at all times. No. I carry a little, uh, I have a little photocopied version of my passport that's shrunk down by like 60% and laminated. I keep it in my wallet. And that's usually pretty good for yeah. any police. Yeah, that's very common. Like that. But the bottom line is we're not going to trouble with you with things that you don't really need to know. Instead, we're going to focus on stuff that... You should know. Um, and we're, we're going to assume you don't really know anything, so we're going to start with the basics. <laughs> we're, we're going to assume our listeners are coming at us from a position of zero knowledge on Thai law. Yeah, pretty much. But, um, now, but, the first thing, I guess I'll jump in, Greg, with the first one. Um, right. I mean, this is something that I think almost everyone knows already. Um, but just to be perfectly clear, Thailand has some of the strictest lace majesty laws in the world. I don't know if they're technically the strictest, but essentially um, any criticism of the royal family or the monarchy, and that's pretty broadly interpreted, is against the law and uh, involves pretty severe punishment. And it's gen- generally enforced. Uh, so I always tell, it's funny, Greg, I don't know what advice you give, but I always just tell my friends or anyone coming here, I just tell them not to talk about the monarchy at all. Like even even though the law says you can't criticize them, I think it's just better to look at uh, the monarchy as Thai business. And so I just, I pretty much just never talk about it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. There's yeah. no upside to getting involved in any issues around the monarchy. Yeah, I mean, like it, none, none. Yeah, and it's um, you know, it's a bit, it's kind of sad in a way because obviously, the monarchy is a huge part of Thai culture and Thai history, and uh, it's something that I think foreigners are naturally curious about. So it would be great if we could just have these open, freewheeling conversations about it uh, here in Thailand, but you just can't. Um, and yeah. so. Yeah, so that's the first thing you got to know. And there's been some, you know, I think almost all foreigners know this, but there have been cases of, it's, again, it's usually some drunk goofball who starts spouting off about the king or he, he's, right. there was some graffiti that some idiot uh, tourist painted. And, uh, like, you will get arrested and you will get deported if you're lucky. If you're lucky. Yeah, otherwise... Maybe at the end of a long jail term. Yeah, otherwise you'll you'll be in, uh, in uh, the Bangkok Hilton for uh, about 10 years. Yeah, just don't mention it. Don't talk about it. Don't discuss it. Don't think you're cute and smart and be like, hey, I'm going to maybe say something. Eh. Don't be that guy. Yeah, yeah, Just don't talk about it and move on. Move on to the next topic. Yeah. Speaking of the next topic, Greg, what's the second? No, oh, exactly. By the way, this these are not in any particular order, but this the next thing I think is quite important to know. 
Yeah, and this is something that I always forget, even though I'm not a big booze hound. But every once in a while, I will think like, oh, today's a good day for a beer for me to stop by and buy a bottle of booze, a bottle of wine or something like that. And lo and behold, it is a Buddhist holiday or an election of some type or something. And no alcohol sales are allowed that day. Yes. Every foreigner should know that um, most of the time you can buy alcohol in Thailand, but there are many circumstances where you cannot. So, Greg, what, the, what, what are the hours? Oh, you know, I, I don't know. I never know. I think it's like you're allowed to buy it from like 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then from 5 p.m. to midnight. I, I don't know. I, I never remember, and I always have to look at the little sign that's posted by the alcohol thing. Well, you're, so what you're, are they? you're basically half right. Um, the, the, best okay. way to think, the best way to think about it is you can buy alcohol during lunchtime and then after 5 p.m. Uh, so basically, uh, you can buy from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So kind of a three-hour big lunch, um, and then 5 p.m. Uh, until midnight. So they're supposed to stop selling at midnight. Really? You can't buy it after midnight? Weird. I, I guess that's a good way to look at it, though. Lunchtime and uh, after work. Okay. That's easier to remember than the specific hours, because I always forget. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, you know, you might, you know, there, you might find some ways around this, but in general, this stuff is enforced. So if you, especially if you're at a big chain, so if you walk into Seven Eleven, you know, uh, in the morning to buy booze, you're not going to be able to do that. Uh, or you know, yeah. if it's three p.m., you're not going to be able to do that. Some people have said that if you go to like down like a little sub soy somewhere and go to like a little mom and pop shop, I've heard this. Maybe have some beers in the freezer. I've never done it myself, you know, because I'm a right. good law abiding citizen. Right. But some people have said that's maybe what you can do if you right. are so inclined. Um, but your point about um, Buddhist holidays as well as days surrounding elections uh, because yeah. uh, tourists sometimes just get burned where they're they're ready to go party and boom, the next day is an election and they can't buy alcohol. So check the calendar, do some research before you come and find out what days you will be able to buy alcohol. All right, the next one is uh, something that we all actually is something that everyone should keep in mind. It's really, really handy. And I think the rules have changed recently too. What, what's going on here? Well, I think just in general, the third fact about Thai laws you should be aware of is that penalties for overstaying visas are pretty strict and they are enforced. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't think many people just plan to overstay, but some people are just sloppy about it or they don't pay attention or they, you know, they think I've heard foreigners complaining that, uh, you know, their visa was up, but then uh, on the day that they were supposed to go extend it, you know, they got sick. Right. You know, and, 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 yeah. and then they're, they, they're shocked when they have to pay a big fine because they're five days late. You know, the Thai government doesn't care why you're late or why you missed it or if you were sick or, the, you know, it, 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 the bottom line is foreigners just regularly get burned for uh, overstaying their visas. Right. So I, I actually noticed this uh, when I was doing my like 90 day check in a while ago and I noticed this list on the wall at immigration and I was like, oh, wow, they must have. I, I'm not sure if they've updated it. But anyway, this was very prominently displayed. So check this out. Ed. If you overstay your visa and you surrender to the authorities, that is, I, I think that means if you are leaving Thailand on your way out and they notice that you've overstayed your visa, you can be fined. So Right, so you can't escape. Yeah, they, 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 that's exactly right. So they, they, basically, they're not going to let you leave until you pay. Well, it used to, but it used to be a fine. But now this list here, anyway, it says, in case of aliens surrendering to the authorities, period of overstay, more than 90 days. So I guess that means you've got up to 90 days, which you're fined, I think, 500 baht a day. But up to if you're, if, you're, if you're caught staying over 90 days, you are banned from Thailand for one year. More than one year, you are banned for three years. More than three years, you are banned for five years, and more than five years, you are banned for 10 years. Wow. But check this out. In case of alien being arrested and prosecuted, so if you're picked up in like a random traffic stop or a random drug test or something like that, and you have an overstay, check out this Check this out. If you are, your overstay is less than a year, I'm, a, I'm assuming that includes like one day up to one year, you are banned from Thailand for five years. If it's more than one year, you are banned from Thailand for 10 years. They're not messing around. Yeah, no, it, uh, it's pretty strict. And, uh, you know, again, I think most people realize that you shouldn't overstay, but the, sometimes they don't realize what the fine is or, or that it's actually enforced. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they don't have much room for uh, patience on this. No amount of uh, smiling and whying will get you out of that. That's right. <laughs> 
All right, Craig, yeah. what do you got? Number four. Number four is, I think, is something that a lot of people uh, know about, but it's good to keep in mind, too, if you want to put down roots here. Uh, and that is the foreigners cannot own land or even condos unless the building is majority owned by ties. That's right. Again, I think this is a little bit like the lace medicine stuff. Most people know this already. But uh, in general, I know there are a few exceptions. Uh, like if you're a huge investor or if you own a company that then owns land, there are some minor exceptions. But in general, if you're not a Thai citizen, you cannot own a real property. You can't own physical land. Now, there are various legal maneuvers like leases or putting stuff in a, a Thai person's name. But of course, those are legally dubious and, and put you at risk if you try to kind of get around the law. Well, my wife is listening, Ed, so I don't know what you're talking about. I'm perfectly <laughs> happy with that setup with a Thai person owning it and me just living in their shadow. <laughs> I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm not going. I'm not going to say anything. Um, now, uh, the cool thing is, uh, foreigners can own condominiums. Um, it's just the they, they can't own more than like 49 percent of the condos in a given building. So, you know, so obviously a lot of foreigners own condos. Uh, it's just so if I rocked up to a condo building and was like, "Hey, I want to buy that condo," and they checked and they're like, "Ooh, sorry, if you foreigner." bought one of these condos in this building that would tip the majority of condos owned by foreigners over 50 percent, so you can't buy it that's right yeah. is that how it works that's right yeah hmm. yeah, so, um, yeah obviously condo owners know this and so they market things properly and make things available to the right number of people uh but it's just uh it's just something people should know so i mean it's i think it's great we can own condos um but uh, it it does it is kind of depressing for people like you and I who've been here a long time. Basically, no matter how long we stay here, unless we become Thai citizens, we can't actually own land. Yeah, yeah. You know how I got around that? I dug up some dirt. I put it in a box. It's in my closet. They're not taking it away from me. Dude, dude. You're, it's my land. You're so clever. <laughs> That's right. All right. What's the next one? All right. Number, number five. five um, that every foreigner should know that there are pretty big fines for littering, especially in tourist areas. I mean, it's, it's in a way, it's quite predatory. So along Sukhumit Road, where there's a lot of foreigners, and then if you're uh, in uh, Thai parks or even if you're just at Thai beaches, most of which are public parks, the penalties for littering are quite high. I think I think on, on Sukhumit, it's at least 2,000 baht just for people who throw a cigarette butt on the ground. Yeah, I've got lots of friends who've been busted doing that. And uh, yeah, 2,000 baht, the Tessa kit, the, so the bylaw officers, they sort of, they, they stake the place out, perhaps a bit unfairly, yeah. but they're watching like hawks. Yeah, it's a bit predatory. Um, so don't uh, litter, uh, especially in any place w- w- where, where you're likely to be, <laughs> you know, like, you know, if yeah. you're, you know, obviously tourists or expats where we might be in areas where there's more foreigners and it's just... Uh, I guess it's a revenue generating thing. It's like speed traps back home where, you know, cops sit there and that's how that that's how the local police department makes money is is catching people speeding. Uh well the, the way they make money here uh catching people littering. That's right. And actually, you know, we all read about how they banned tourists from the James Bond Island, right? Because the island was just getting so overrun with tourists and right. garbage and stuff like that. So I think they're starting to get a bit more hard, cracking down a bit more on these like environmental yes. offenses. Yes. And I, I found something online that said that in February of 2018, 24 of Thailand's most popular beaches banned littering. Those who break the law can be fined either 100,000 baht or face a year in jail. Wow. I mean, I think probably they're, in that case, they're talking about people dumping garbage. That's what they have to be talking about. Um, but yeah, th- th- those are maybe those are pretty, <laughs> those are pretty high penalties. Yeah, pretty huge. And again, they seem to be taking this stuff pretty seriously now. So um, yeah, I think there's a big difference between a guy who's unloading a dump truck of garbage onto a beach and a guy mm-hmm. who's dropping like a, yeah. a cigarette butt. But you know, <laughs> who wants to t- be the first to test it out? Right. Not me. Right. All right, Craig, what do you got next? Well, this one's interesting because I recently came up against this in uh, at immigration. I won't go into details because it's boring, but um, we did a show back in season three, episode 20 of season three, where we had a lawyer on, a lawyer named Gerald Kippen, who talked about a change that was made at the time that basically said foreigners with a work permit can have more than one job because previously for every job you did, you needed a separate page in your work permit or a separate listing in your work permit that That's said right. you were allowed to do that job. But recently, a few years ago, they changed the rules that said, if you have a work permit, you can do a bunch of jobs, as long as they're not one of the forbidden jobs that foreigners right. are allowed to do. So you, yeah, so we thought that we would 
be able to do anything we want as long as we have one valid work permit. Right. But apparently that law has been rescinded and is no longer in effect. So we're back to the system where you need one work permit for every single job that you are doing. Yeah. Legally speaking. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, for our listeners, maybe for them, just the most important thing for them to realize is that you need a work permit to work in Thailand. Um, so, yeah. And it's, it's not easy to get a, a proper work permit. And there are people who, who do try to work under the radar. Um, and, you know, and, but I would not say it's unenforced. Um, I, I think it's difficult for the government to enforce it because it's hard to catch people working. But it's not like they don't try. I was talking to my lawyer friend about this and I was like, oh, yeah, so this, this rule was was put into place and he was like yeah they kind of quietly got rid of that and didn't really make a big deal of it so right um there must have been some back room machinations going on there yeah so you should be aware i mean even if even if you want to come to thailand and be a digital nomad and your attitude is well uh, you know my, my work is online um that is technically against the thai against thai law uh so if you're yeah, if you're doing work. if you're doing any work here uh, you need a work permit. Uh, now, whether you can get away with it or not is a separate issue, but we're just giving you advice on what the law is. And in general, it's a good idea to try to follow the law. Always follow the law. Official recommendation from the Bangkok podcast. That's right. Okay, what's number seven? Number seven is uh, foreigners cannot own Thai companies. So it's not only that we can't own land, but we can't be majority owners in Thai companies, uh, which means if you've got a dream of coming to Thailand uh, with your uh, hard-earned nest egg that you're going to use to build an incredible business, well, you're going to need some Thai partners. Yeah, no, for a lot of people, I think this they might automatically hear this and think like, oh, well, that doesn't apply to me. I'm not going to buy a company. But um, starting a company is a method that a lot of foreigners do here to remain here legally because you can get a work permit. The company can issue you a work permit. That's right. But there's a ton of paperwork and limitations and rules that you need to follow before you do that that's right yeah but it, yeah now there i want to be clear there are some exceptions to the ownership just like uh, ownership of companies just like there's some exceptions to the ownership of land but in general it's pretty difficult uh, and there are um like legal workarounds but again you're putting yourself on questionable or, or doubtful ground um so it's just something to know if you're if you want to come here and do business uh you're going to need uh 51 percent uh, thai ownership yeah, make some good Thai friends. That's right. <laughs> All right, number eight is another one related to business, actually. And if you do open a business, one of the difficult things about it is that for every one foreigner that you employ, including yourself, if you were the owner of the business, you need four Thai employees to get a work permit yes. for yourself. I mean, this is one of these things that I believe, and again, remember, don't rely on us, talk to a Thai lawyer. I think this is one of those things that is it's more of like an administrative regulation in the labor department so i'm i'm not I, i'm not sure if it's a law 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 i think it's like a standard practice uh, but it is real so you and i both know many people who've come up against this problem it, it mm-hmm. generally it gen- generally means if you want to get a, 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 a thai work permit for yourself you're going to need four thai employees and if you're and if you yeah. want to hire one foreigner who also is going to work permit you're going to need four more thai employees which for a total of 10 people working for your company a lot of people try to get around it by like quote unquote hiring their wife's brother or something like that as the driver or something. But uh, again, we don't recommend trying to skirt the law. Yeah, and it's just uh, I remember when I first learned of this because uh, uh, I, I I did try to start my own company and I first learned of this. I was I was I really was surprised. I was like, really? So because <laughs> oh, yeah. you know because you know when you start a business, you you might be like you and your buddy, and now you're thinking like, oh wait a minute, we need four, maybe eight workers right. on, on the payroll it can be a shock yeah. now again there, there may be some ways around it and you got to talk to a lawyer are, about if, that if you're if you're a boi company boi companies i don't believe need to adhere to this law but boi companies also have a lot of other requirements yeah that are like a massive investment or, yeah like a massive, yeah, investment. massive investment and stuff like that so there's a lot of caveats to all these laws but you know again look into them on your own so greg why don't you take the next one as well i'm not even sure i understand it Well, and speaking of foreigners working in Thailand, if you are a foreigner here and you work for a company and they give you a work permit, there is a minimum salary that they are supposed to pay you based on your nationality. Oh, right. I get get what you're saying now. Yeah. Yeah. Now, actually, you know, I I've, I spent about half an hour Googling around on this, and I I, I, can't, I couldn't find any information in English or very little information in English about this. It was all about, like, minimum wage for, for like, you know, laborers per right. province or something right. like that. 
I did find some information, uh, one from this website called TWG Law Office. I know nothing about the company or anything like that. But So I'm not sure how recent this is. Apparently, this was updated in 2008, so that's 12 years ago. Um, so it's probably changed by then. But this sounds about right. So according to this, um, if you're a foreigner from Australia, Canada, Europe, not including Russia, Japan, or the USA, you are required to be paid at least 50000 bottom a month. Uh, if you're from Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea, or Taiwan, that goes down to 45000 bottom a month. And for other Asian countries that are not listed, plus Central and Southern America, Eastern Europe, Mexico, Turkey, Russia, and South Africa, that goes down to 35000 bottom a month. And at the bottom of the scale is Africa, except South Africa, Burma, Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam need to make at least 25000 bottom a month. Yeah, so this would be relevant if you were going to hire foreigners and, and and then you maybe wanted to pay them less than this. So this is something you'd have to work into your business plan or or basically you can't pay foreigners less even if they agree to it. Right. Technically, yeah, you, know, you gotta be gotta be used to that. I bet there's a lot of foreigners out there that maybe have been working and come across this and be like, wait a minute, I should be making an extra ten grand a month. Yeah, no, I'm sure I'm, I'm getting I'm getting gypped. Yeah, I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. Yeah. All right, you wanna take the last one? This is number ten. Last, I want to mention something that might not affect that many people, but uh, people should be aware that uh, if you want to fly a drone, uh, uh, like for photography or videography purposes while in Thailand, I know it's getting a lot more popular with uh, uh, tourists and expats or people who, uh, who have like, you know, like video logs, you know, uh, and, and, and because Thailand is so beautiful, a lot of people want to fly drones. You should be aware that it is legal to do that, but... Um, you do have to register the drone and get a permit if it has a camera and it weighs more than two kilos. Um, and then there are a lot of restrictions, obviously, around airports, uh, places like temples, government buildings, and things like that. And uh, I do have a buddy who does this, uh, flies a drone, and he said he's got all the certifications. So he went through all the hoops and is is doing it properly. But it is something you should be aware of. Interesting, yeah. And it's hugely popular. Like, I just see so many video videographers on youtube now have drones like it's almost you need a drone if you if you want to do that that's right if you want to have a travel blog or something like that. that's right yeah. so it's it's it, they're they're very cheap now they're very accessible uh, everyone can have them but like you can probably you can probably fly a uh a drone in thailand and get away with it but as with anything if you get pinched there is a law that they're going to hit you with for sure, for sure. You know, most drone, yeah. I think most drone operators are kind of aware of this, uh, but uh, Thailand is not an exception. And, and according to my buddy who went through it, he said he said they do enforce it. Really? Interesting. Actually, you know, as, as we're talking right now, I'm just going through, I'm going to an area just sort of northeast of Putamantan uh, that I know have I've seen previously on Google Maps that has been blurred out because it belongs to an important person. Ah. Um, but now it is not blurred out anymore. So ah. interesting. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, keep that in mind when you're doing that because, you know, I have a friend who wanted to uh, fly his drone in Tonbury to take a really cool picture of the river. And uh, he was really nervous. I told him, like, yeah, you can do it from this soy and don't, no one's there. But he was scared, man. Like, he knew that, <laughs> right. that they'd be looking for him. Right. But I really don't think that if some random beat cop sees a drone, he's going to, like, start <laughs> blowing his whistle and running all around the place looking for some dude holding Right, the phone. probably not, probably not. But, you know. TIT, you never know. Anyway, thanks, Pim. That was some uh, good idea. And these are some just some laws that uh, it might not affect everyone, but they might affect you. And you need to keep them in mind if you're going to come here and uh, have some fun when the thing opens up again. Yeah, Hopefully, I, you know, I really enjoyed this topic. Yeah, I really enjoyed this topic. And listeners, if there's any other laws that you think are important, send them in because we can always do uh, 10 more laws you should know. Yeah, true that. All right, another thank you to our sponsor, Shrewsbury International School, Bangkok. If you're looking for a leading international school education for your child in Saturn or Sukhumvit, they have two campuses accepting applications now. Visit their website at shrewsbury.ac.th slash podcast to find out more. All right, let's get into Love, Loathe, or Live With, where one of us picks a particular aspect of life in Bangkok, which we then discuss and decide if it's something we love about living here, loathe about living here, or have come to accept as something that we just have to learn to live with no matter how we feel about it. This week, it's my turn. All righty. Ed, I've got to assume that you've been out to some uh, some attractions, some local uh, amusement parks or museums or, or restaurants or what have you. I have. And you walk in. Yeah, and you walk in and someone takes your picture and you're like, oh, what was that about? 
You go in and you enjoy the day. And then on your way out, you see a table full of plates selling photos. And you see your photo that's now been turned into a sticker stuck to a plate. Yeah, yeah, this is weird. You know, that 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 kind of precise thing that you're talking about I, I has actually ha- only happened to me once. Um really? uh, that but but I know I know what you're talking about that precise thing, but there is this um and and again, you know, obviously because I don't go to tourist stuff very often because I'm not a tourist, right? Um right. but it is a thing. It is a thing, you know, where it's like they they catch you when you're going in and then they try to sell you it on the way out uh like even if you didn't approve of it to begin with. Yeah, I I always found it a bit of a. I mean, I've got I, I I wouldn't say I loathe it. I think it's it's a live with for me. But I always found it a bit like a bit uppity. Like, oh, really? You're going to take my picture and try to sell it back to me, even though I didn't tell you it was okay to take my photo. Right, 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 right. Um, and especially because I have a kid, so anytime we walk into one of these places, click, 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 you know, and it's kind of a hard sell. Hey, you wanted this photo? You, if you're a good parent, you'll take this photo. This beautiful memory, you know. And the reason I thought of this was because I looked up on my shelf now. And I could see a stack of dust-covered plates with photos of my kid on them that I'm probably never going to look at again. <laughs> so basically that means you actually bought them. My wife did. I would just say nope, but she's a sucker for nostalgia, which is, I guess, what they're banking on. Oh, oh well, let me just give my verdict. I mean, I think it's annoying, uh, but I'm not sure I'd say I loathe it. I understand people are trying to make a buck, but uh, yeah, it is. I, I got to put it in the in the moderately annoying category. Yeah, same. I'm, I'm a live with barely I'm, I'm sort of one foot in loathe but my bigger foot in live with <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right <laughs> so as we mentioned at the beginning of the show we'd like to say thank you to josh likes to eat for lending us his support at the show shadow level and greg what did you find out about josh well josh first of all he has a very interesting name i'm not sure what his last name is Josh likes to eat. Maybe it's an ethnic name. Maybe his last name is likes to eat. <laughs> it could be. I'm not sure what nationality that is, but maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe it's Greek or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. You know, back in the day in Calgary, there was a radio station and they had a bit come on with uh, Joe Bag of Donuts. <laughs> hey, I'm Joe Bag of Donuts. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah, so maybe they're related. But anyway, um, I, I as, as always, I, I write to our uh, new patrons and I ask them to tell me a little something interesting about themselves. And uh, Josh likes to eat, got back to me. And he said, I guess his story relates to your last bonus episode um, at the where we talked about uh, Siui, the famous mummified serial killer whose body was propped up and on display for the past few decades at the Siri Rat Medical Museum. Remember that? Yes, I do. And, yeah. And uh, so he said, at the time of my first visit to Bangkok, I was studying medicine 15 years ago. I went to the Sirirat Medical Museum, and when I got home, I proceeded to drop out of medicine. <laughs> really? That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. So I've talked before about how the Medical Museum is a must-see if you've got a strong stomach, but it is messed up, dude, and it is so messed up that it made this aspiring doctor, our buddy Josh Likes to Eat, made him drop out of medical that, school. That's incredible. That really is yeah. incredible. <laughs> that's crazy it reminds me of back when i was a kid and i wanted to be a dentist and then i started looking at like encyclopedias about dentistry i'm like nope not for me <laughs> that is funny you know once you once you get a real up close uh, uh view of what you're going to be delving into you might be less interested right 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 but uh the ironic thing about josh likes to eat he said uh he then went and got a business degree but he ended up working in a hospital ah uh, funny yeah <laughs> so so uh, there you go. But I guess with a business degree working in a hospital, you're probably not going to be cutting up mummified cadavers. Right, 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 so, right. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd say that's a win for Josh. And he said, uh, he said, my birthday is 30th December because, you know, our patrons get birthday postcards from us. So I always ask them that too. And he said, my birthday is 30th December, probably one of the worst times to have a birthday as people say your Christmas presents are both for Christmas and birthdays. That's right. Fair enough. But Josh, check this out. My wife, her birthday is on February 14th. Ooh. The same day as Valentine's Day. And not only that, we got married on February 17th. Oh, dude, you can, you can wrap one gift. I say one gift for all three. You see, that's that's what I say. But my <laughs> wife doesn't really think. <laughs> she doesn't see it that way. Along those same lines, yeah. So uh, I feel your pain, buddy. But Josh, it, it, it could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It could be worse. Yeah, but thanks for your support, man. And uh, when you get a vacation from the hospital, hopefully you're staying safe right now. But when you get out of there and uh, Thailand is back up, um, come over and say hi. We'll take you out for a beer. Maybe we'll go back to the Sierra Medical Museum. Maybe your, <laughs> your resolve has hardened in the years since. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. 
A final thanks to our patrons who support the show. Patrons get a ton of cool perks and the warm, fuzzy feeling knowing that they're helping support the show. Find out more by clicking support on our website. And connect with us online. We're Bangkok Podcast on social media, bangkokpodcast.com on the web, or simply bangkokpodcast at gmail.com. We love hearing from our listeners and always reply to our messages. Yeah, baby. You can also listen to each episode on the YouTube. You can chat with us on the line or even reach out to me directly on the Twitter where I am BKK Greg. So thanks for listening, everyone. Take it easy. Take care. And we'll see you back here next week. For sure. Test, test, tests. Alrighty. Ah, that big bottle of uh, dark rum is running out pretty quickly. Sure it is. <laughs> what, do you, what does that mean? <laughs> it means you're an alcoholic. <laughs> no, I'm not. I can stop anytime, man. <laughs>